this is something that takes time. And even if it does take four years, even if it does take five, the reward is so worth it. Because in the grand scheme of things, if you look at four years of your life invested to change your life financially, it's so worth it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I have the pleasure to host Jordan who comes from New York. Welcome Jordan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I can't complain. Uh, the sun is shining. We're getting into the summertime. So really, really happy. Amazing. It's positive vibes during the summer. <laughs> Absolutely. You cannot complain. You have great weather there. Yeah. As you know, in New York, we get the extremes of both. So I'm happy when we get out of the cold. So around this time is, is perfect for me. Before we get started with uh, the trading story, can you first tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and what got you into trading? Pretty much growing up uh, from a very young age, I had my eyes set on becoming a doctor and um, going through college, going through high school. I was a bio major and eventually got my uh, bachelor's degree in bio and even went on to get my master's degree in bio. I even uh, went on to, to become an adjunct lecturer and I was teaching different students and different subjects in biology as well. Right before I was going to take the exam, there's an exam that you call, we call the MCAT, which is the medical school admissions test. Uh, before I took that exam to pretty much get my application ready to apply for medical school, it's funny, I was talking to somebody, he had asked me such a simple question, but I didn't realize how big of an impact that would have on my life. Did he just ask me, what is your dream scenario? How do you imagine, you know, your dream life looking like? You know, how many, how does the house look like? How big is it? How many cars do you have? How, how many kids do you have? And I explained that I have, you know, this big house and these types of cars, and Lamborghini over here, Rolls Royce over here. And, and I'm saying all of that. And he said, okay, fine. Um, how old are you when you see that happening? And of course, with my current track, I thought about, how long that would take me to get there. It's funny, at that moment, I felt depressed in a way. I was like, wow, maybe if I'm good, maybe around 50, mid 50s. And that was so depressing. But then what came out of my mouth afterwards was really interesting. I said, well, but if I started investing in real estate, I'd probably get there by like 35 or something. He's like, so why don't you do that? And I'm like, I can't, I, I can't. And I had, <laughs> I had no reason why. And Really, when we went dove into it and really, really thought about it, you know, at some point uh, you realize you're doing things to please other people. And, and you know, a lot of times that, that could be your parents. And I knew how proud my parents would be if I did become a doctor. I feel like every single parent one, that their kid is going to be a doctor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The golden career for every single parent. I didn't realize I was on this track for so long. And it's not that I didn't like what I was doing. I, I really did have a great affinity for it and I still do. But I realized that I wanted to do so much more uh, besides that. And uh, in order to do that, I had to look into a different route. So I looked at entrepreneurship. Uh, I looked at um, especially real estate because that's really what I was studying at the time. So I went to real estate school, started to um, get into the investing side of things. And then I bought my first property. And then I ran into problem number one. After getting my first property, I realized I need some more capital to keep this going. It's funny, as I was in this phase, I met someone who was very young. Um, he was around 22 years old and he owned 22 properties at 22 years old. I was shocked to the point where I didn't really believe it, but I wanted to inquire on how he did that. And he said to me that, well, he makes his money on, in the Forex market and then he reinvests his money in real estate. It's the first time I've ever heard of such a market. I've heard of a stock market, but I was like, what is Forex? He was kind enough to take me to his apartment and I saw all of these charts and he was showing me all of these applications and I was just blown away. And for one reason or another, I think when people talk about Forex, especially when you hear about the amounts of money that people can make, you tend to not really believe it. But for some reason, I was in that element at that right time to just be maybe even gullible enough to really believe it. And I believed it. And ever since that day, I was bothered about everything that I was doing to the point where I felt like I needed to 
get into this this forex thing. I needed to understand it, what it is, and I really needed to excel at it. First of all, I have to get down explaining to my parents that I'm not doing medicine anymore. And I have to make sure that whatever I get into, which is going to be this, that I definitely excel at it. So I have to put everything at this. And I was ready to do that. So I started my Forex journey. I started doing my research, started really understanding just the basics. What is what is a pip? What is a lot? What is this? What is that? What does Forex come from? And then eventually I fell upon, uh, I think probably the most popular company that uh, most traders fall upon is IML. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the funny thing with IML, I have absolutely nothing negative to say, but I was also fortunate to fall upon an educator who really knew how to trade. I was very, very fortunate. Um, he really knew how to trade, really knew how to break down the charts. And I learned a lot of the technicals that I know today from him. And from learning that, I didn't stay too long. I was there for maybe about four months. Then I went on my own. I bought other courses and I was on my journey. I was on my journey, you know, uh, losing a lot and really going through the motions of what it means to be a forex trader. Such a hard, hard journey. But eventually, as you start making improvements and going over things, you start uh, seeing the these the small improvements. And then eventually, one day, you start to see things start to click over and over. And then one week, it clicks for the whole week. And then it clicks for a couple of weeks. And then you realize, wow, I might just be a profitable trader. What did you struggle with the most? Being able to, to say that this is enough was my biggest struggle. My biggest problem is that I would make profits in the market. It didn't take me too long to start making profits. But at the end of the week, they were all gone. <laughs> and maybe I was more in the negative. And I was not able to keep those profits. Even, you know, sometimes you get to the end of the week, you keep those profits, but you over leverage too early. And I think that's another struggle I had that if I'm going uh, with one lot, uh, week number one, I immediately go to like two lots and three lots week number two, just because I had a good week one. And that's not really the way I realized that you should be scaling up. You should build that consistency week to week and slowly scale up. There is such a thing as 1.5 lots. There is such a thing as 1.7 lots. So understanding those things and really scaling up slowly and really building that consistency was really a key thing for, for me to get out of that. What are the failures that you cherish the most? I remember being so confident. And this is a, another part of being such a beginner trader. You build this cockiness when you feel like you've got it figured out. And I remember being so confident, and I do not recommend that anyone does this, but I remember being so confident that I took my uh, mortgage money for the month and I put it in my trading account. And I said, you know what? I'm going to flip this account and I'm going to turn into thousands of dollars. I'll never forget that moment. And I'll never forget the instrument, gold, uh, which happens to be the only thing I trade today, uh, ironically. But gold, I was in this gold trade. I just remember the trade just falling out of the sky. Like, I, I, I did not understand what happened at that moment. Gold just fell. I was in a buy. And all of my profits, all, all, not profits, but all of my money was gone. I called my fiance at the time and I was like, I can't believe what I just did. And it did impact me for months because it took me months to even get catch up on that mortgage payment. But that was such a significant moment for me because I realized, uh, number one, it was a pride check, meaning you don't have it all figured out. You don't ever really have it all figured out in the markets. Don't be so cocky. And also that this is a long journey and Let's think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on our phone, probably in bed, in our pajamas, while everybody else is out there working hard and sweating, making not even a fraction of what we make. It deserves to be this hard. We have to think about that. And, and when I really got to understanding that, I really started to respect the process so much more. I have so much more respect for the process less pride and more humility when I approach the markets overall. What were the biggest lessons that you learned on the way? Understanding the definition of insanity, meaning that you're expecting different results, but you keep on doing the same thing. So if you keep on losing, then clearly you have to do something wrong. So lesson number one was that you really have to do the dirty work. Everybody loves to get in and out of trades, but we don't typically love to go over our trades and go over what we're doing wrong or even go over what we're doing right. Sometimes we win a trade and we just walk away and that's it. But let's see what we did right 
to actually mimic that over and over and over again. When I started breaking down my trades and realizing what I was doing wrong and what I was doing right, in terms of what I was doing wrong, I realized I was doing the, almost the same thing wrong over and over and over again. And when you realize that, you pick that up and you really ingrain that in your mind, then you you tell yourself in that situation, in the live environment, all right, I'm not going to do this again. And from there, those are the moments I saw the biggest improvements in my trading. When I really sat down, broke down the charts and really understood what I was doing that was causing all of these mistakes. So you keep a journal and you're reviewing your trades. And that journal changed over time. I used to just write everything down, but I realized I would forget how the trade even looked like. All right, I need to take a screenshot of the trade. I need to know what happened. What was my thinking during that time? Why did I even take the sell or the buy? And also going a step further, determine if this is a good loss. And what I mean by a good loss is sometimes you just follow all of your steps, your trading steps, and you follow everything perfectly, and it's just a loss. And the other element of trading is that you will not win 100% of the time. If your uh, trading strategy allows you to win 70% of the time, well, let's look at a good sample size of this environment where you took this trade in these kind of conditions and you followed your trading plan. Even if you racked up maybe three, four losses, maybe out of 10 trades, you had three or four losses, but you had six wins. It shouldn't surprise you that losses do happen. Losses are going to happen in every strategy, uh, realizing that no strategy is going to be 100%. And it's not about going from strategy to strategy. And I, and I really had to learn that. I went through so many strategies and I bought so many courses, really invested in my knowledge all to just come back to the very first strategy that I learned. And I'm happy that I did that because I, I think in this journey, it's very personal. I may have a course and I have students. I may be teaching a certain style that doesn't go with somebody and it does go with somebody else. And somebody else may teach a different style that goes with that person. So we have to understand that trading is so personal and it's necessary to go through all of those courses and all of those different strategies to figure out what really mix, meshes well with you. And pretty much you're going to pretty much find a strategy that really works because many strategies work in the market. You just have to figure out which one is best for you. Yeah, definitely. Because you have to have a strategy that suits your personality, but many are making the mistake to trying to replicate what others are doing. But you can never replicate, even like successful people, if you tell them to go through the same journey, it's not a guarantee that they're going to receive the same results because there is so much psychology involved into this game. Can you tell us a little bit about your psychology towards trading and what did you do to improve uh, your psychology and mindset? I can say many things about psychology in terms of put yourself in this environment or step away from the charts and all of these things are good. Uh, read this book and read that book. But there is an element where it's just experience. There's nothing I can say. You just have to sit at the chart day in and day out and make your mistakes and then realize what you are doing wrong and learn how to just calm down. You know, and I think when traders just learn how to calm down and that does take time and you just really allow whatever strategy you have to play out or whether it's price action, you're waiting for it to hit a specific zone. When you learn how to calm down, I think that's one of the biggest psychology boosts that you could probably have. Not necessarily going for a money goal, but just really understanding structure in the market. Just based on structure, if I'm at this area of support and this is my next resistance, then I'm going to ride this trade to this area of resistance. Not because I want to see my profit total at $10,000. That's what structure told me. And really understanding that and being mature in the markets. And now money is money. Not worrying about hold numbers and not worrying about chasing those things really allows you to put yourself in a position to really uh, win in the markets. To focus on the process, not on the gain, on the money that you're going to gain, because this is also distracting us and causes greediness and you start like violating the rules. And when it comes to like remaining calm, this was a really big issue for me. I was aware at the moment that I'm not doing the right thing, but you cannot like uh, control yourself. It definitely comes with time. Did you practice like any mindfulness techniques or what were the things that helped you to like remain in this calm state and uh, stay focused on the charts? One of the key things was just preparation in the, in the markets. You're not preparing for trade. Like for instance, if the news events tend to cause that. So if we have NFP coming, 
and you're just there and you allow that NFP time to just happen. And then you're you're scrambling. You don't know what to do. Price is going up. Price is going down. Should I enter this way? Oh, my God, I entered and I had a big loss. Let me enter again. You know, all of these things just really lead to a chaotic environment. So pair your trading environment, right? So what I mean is, all right, I know NFP is coming. So I'm reviewing what types of news releases are out there. What happened uh, the previous month? Uh, what are they expecting? What are they projecting? Okay, fine. I would uh, split my screen. So I'd have gold on one screen, which is what I trade. And I'd have the DXY just to see what the DXY is doing as well. Just have that prepared put myself in a calm environment, use the bathroom if I need to, have some water here and just calm down. Maybe play some music and just allow my strategy to play out. I would prepare in a way where I would expect like a buy or I would just expect a sell. And there's nothing wrong with that, but with that expectation, you get so tied to that expectation sometimes. And if you marked up in the weekend and you're looking at buys for gold, you're almost in a way psychologically focused on only buys when the buys can completely change and it could be a sell. And my perspective on the markets completely change. I'm prepared for both sides. If it buys, this is my area. These are where my alerts are. And when my alerts are set, then I'm ready to take the trade. And the same thing if it sells. If it sells, these are my alerts. This is my area where I feel comfortable with the sell. And this is where I execute. So preparing for every scenario. And if it's not fitting those scenarios, I don't trade. I just don't trade. Preparing for every scenario is really what has helped me in that element. Do you like analyze the charts in the morning and then you write a plan for the day, like the areas where you want to execute and watch, or do you do it like on a weekly basis? How, how do you plan the trading day or trading weeks? I used to do it more so on the weekends, more so when I was looking for patterns and different things like that. But now I'm more of a support and resistance trader, so I'm doing it day to day. So throughout the day, fluctuations are going to happen. You're going to get new highs and new lows. So I would prepare support and resistance right before I'm ready to trade or sometimes right after I'm done trading. I'll just see where my major support areas are, major resistance areas. And I'm big, big on alerts. I'm not going to be sitting in front of my charts 24 seven. Uh, I make sure I have the, you know, the pro plan for trading view. And I'm making sure that when my alert is hit, I go on my phone. If I like the setup, then I'll look at it a little deeper and then I'll enter. If not, then, you know, I'll just let it be. Would you like to share your screen and maybe show us how you prepare in an example of a trade? Sure, sure. Let's do it. First and foremost, I'd like to start with top down analysis. I'd like to show that how I see the market, first of all. I see the market moving in three and sometimes four different ways. So there are impulsive moves, there are corrections, and there are continuations. And of course, that fourth, which sometimes happens, is, is that consolidation. I'm looking at the market and what I see here, starting from this area here of support, we have an impulsive move to the upside, we have a correction, and then we have a continuation. All right. And this is another correction. This is a continuation, correction continuation, and so on and so forth. And you can see this everywhere in the market in every single time frame. You go anywhere, you see the same thing. Going towards the downside, big impulsive move to the downside, correction, continuation, another correction, continuation, et cetera, et cetera. And the main thing that we want to understand is that Something is going with the trend so long as, depending on if you're on a downtrend or an uptrend, so long as that retest is respected. So when I say we have an impulsive move to the downside here, this correction gives you a new high, a lower high. So this lower high cannot be broken for this trend to continue to be valid. Now, as we go to that next continuation, the retest comes up and I know that this trend is still valid if this high is not broken. As we go and we, we continue to see what happens throughout this trade, this trade is valid for the downtrend until we get to this area over here. And once we break a high like that, a previous high, we know that we are pretty much on a reversal. So that's pretty much how I'm looking at the markets. So uh, we're on that trend. This is how the market is moving until that trend is broken. We get a reversal and we start all over again. The reversal started with a big impulsive move that broke the previous high. And then we had a retest and then we have a continuation to the upside. So that's pretty much how I'm seeing things. Now, when I'm really going in depth and I really want to see what's going on with the markets, I would usually start with like the weekly time frame. And the first thing that I'm doing 
is looking for major areas of support and major areas of resistance. So on the weekly time frame here with gold, we know if you traded gold or you've been trading it recently, you know it recently hit an all-time high. And we're still in this area of resistance over here, okay? Still in this area of resistance, and it's still respecting this area of resistance. And I'm going to go down to the daily time frame to look for closer areas of support, resistance, etc. These areas are important because one area of resistance can become support in the future, and one area of support can become resistance in the future. So, for example, this was an area of resistance for price. Price came up here and stopped. But also, if you drag this across, notice how many areas uh, became significant, right? Not necessarily for resistance, but also for support, right? So this was resistance previously, but it became support right over here. And it became support right over here where price is more recently. And these are going to be significant for as we look for areas in the future, because those areas of support and resistance will serve to be our TPs and even our stop losses. So I see where I am, and then I go down uh, to lower time frames to look for any more significant areas. For instance, this is an area, a small area of resistance over here, and there's other areas of support over here. But let's go into how I would execute my trade after I've marked off all my areas of support and resistance. So I typically like to go to the one hour. I like the one hour a lot uh, in terms of execution of my trades. And when I'm looking at the one hour, I'm looking at either is price coming off an area of resistance or is price coming off an area of support? Okay, fine. Price is coming off an area of resistance over here. We had a big impulsive move off that area. And like I said, from how the market moves, you get a retest and it does not pass the previous high over here. So that retest is very much valid. So what a lot of people will do, because you do have to determine when is the retest actually going to end? And what tools that people use, uh, popular tools, Fibonacci, and I, and I would use that as well. And when you use your Fibonacci tool, you'll see that price comes around this area here to the 61.8. And typically what many traders will do is once price gets to this area, and you can even see that it even formed a area of resistance in this area. Let's let's actually break this down in the lower time frame you'll see that there was actually an area of resistance that was formed here. So very plausible that you take this trade uh, over here and continue sell side. But depending on how much you're going for, if you're going for uh, maybe just a couple tens of pips, you'll get that. But if you're going for a pretty big move, you will probably get stopped out. Uh, why? Because you have this big wick that really can take you out here. And this is just about 100 pips this way. And what I've realized is that because of that, Fibonacci does work well, and I do think a very valuable tool, but it's not my A-plus setup. Over time, I've really realized that support and resistance are really key in terms of taking your, your trades, and I get more wins from breakouts of support and resistance. So where Fibonacci is good, and you're looking at the retest finally breaking off and for forming that continuation to the downside, I personally would wait. I would look at the areas of support here before I take myself. So this is one big area of support, right? This you can technically say is another area. And if you're more comfortable, you can take the trade after you get past this area. But I would actually wait nowadays to take my trade until we break through this area of support. And then I would enter my trade more so around here. That's where I'd be much more comfortable entering my trade. And if we take a look, the trade never really takes me out, never really goes into drawdown, really. Um, get You get equal highs, but really you get a pretty decent trade if you take it from one area all the way to the next area of support. So my TP is probably going to be more so right over here, just based on where previous price landed. And that is not too bad. I do believe I get somewhere around 100 pips or so from this trade. Yes, I do. So that's pretty much how I'm looking at the market. So definitely still looking at structure. So you're seeing um, the retest happening off of support or resistance, but also I'm waiting for support and resistance to return again and to break out to make sure that I really have somewhat of a free fall or a free range to ride up so that I can get it to the next zone. So from what I could understand, you're most of a swing trader, right? You execute on one hour and you keep trades for like a little bit longer. 
I wouldn't necessarily classify myself as a swing. I would say more so intraday. I'd rarely hold, hold a trade for the whole day, but I would hold it for a couple hours if necessary, for sure. Do you have like any rules that for risk to reward? For example, if the trade is one to one, you wouldn't take it. You want to see like a positive risk to reward. Do you have any such kind of rules? Yeah, yeah. My go-to is definitely at least a one to two. I like to see a one to two. I think a one to one could sometimes be a little risky, but it didn't necessarily go with me uh, the best. I'd like a one to two or more when I'm trading. And usually in terms of gold, gold is very volatile. So you want to give it a good, pretty good stop loss. So typically my stop loss would be around 50 pips. But again, I don't want to say necessarily a number because it's still based on structure. It's just that over time, I've realized my stop loss is anywhere around 50 pips to allow myself to get that 100 pip move. And do you take partials or you just wait for the price to come to your target profit? I usually typically wait for price to get to my target profit. And I'm big on price action as well. So if I don't like price action and we're like around 80 pips, I close profits. Even if we're at 50 pips, if I don't like price action anymore, then I'd close. But again, price action is just an experience thing. You know, in the beginning, price action will make you feel like price is doing everything. It's about to reverse. It's about to go up. It's about, you know, you don't really understand. But when you start honing in on one pair and you focus on one pair, you tend to understand its movements, what it likes to do, what this means when price action is doing that. So I have a calm approach, but at the same time, I know when to cut it off and know that the market is probably going to reverse at this area. How did you end up trading only gold? I think it all started from that story again, when I lost my mortgage money on gold. But at first I said, I will never ever trade this instrument ever again. It's the worst instrument ever. I think shortly after I you know, got over it, I said, no, you know what? This is going to be the instrument that I make all my money on. And this is going to be it. In the beginning, I was trading everything. I was trading exotics. I was trading all commodities, all pairs. But I learned that less is more, of course, and really mastering one pair really changed my trading completely because I really started to understand how it moved. And I wasn't just focused on patterns because typically traders can find patterns on almost any chart, but there comes an element where it goes outside of patterns and you're just understanding just that chart, just that gold chart and how it moves. And when you really get to understanding how that moves, then you can make profits, whether you see a typical pattern or you don't see a typical pattern, you just know how it moves. As much as gold had made me cry in the past, that uh, became the pair that made me so much money as well. How does trading uh, changed your perspective to life and what kind of impact it had? Did it influence your aspects of life, like in general? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think trading is definitely one of the most difficult things you can ever do in life, number one. But also when you do become successful at it, it carries over to so many things. And even my approach to different business endeavors, uh, my approach to starting new projects, it's so much more calm and so much more mature of an approach because you understand from trading that everything is a journey and to really master anything, it requires its own journey, requires time, it requires patience. And it requires failure. It requires failure. No better place to learn that than trading because <laughs> you fail and fail and fail so many times before you actually start seeing improvements. You know, you're so not afraid to fail when you're starting something else. You actually expect it and you, you're you okay with that. And you learn how to apply risk management, not only to the charts, but you learn how to apply risk management to other areas of your life and making sure you're not putting all eggs in one all eggs in one basket and making sure you're taking a methodical approach on how you grow things. So definitely trading has impacted me completely different. I would say sometimes I see charts on uh, different things outside of the charts as well. So sometimes you're so stuck in that zone. Aside from that, yeah, definitely I would say being more mature with a journey and something that you're trying to accomplish definitely has changed my perspective. What advice would you give to new traders that are just getting started? Or what advice would you give to yourself if you are about to start now? Which things would have you done like differently? When I first started, I was convinced that in three more months, I'd be a millionaire. And nobody could tell me otherwise. I was ready to quit my job. I was ready to just go all in on trading because I thought I had it figured out. And soon you realize, no, you don't have it figured out. And I think what I tell myself is to relax and understand that this is a journey 
And I would tell myself that, look, you're not going to get rich anytime soon. It's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency, a lot of discipline. You really have to learn these things in this journey and just really focus on the goal, you know, and so many traders, you you may be wondering, you know, are you doing something wrong? Are you, you know, are you just not understanding it? Is everybody just better at you than this? And really, you realize there's no difference between any of us. The only thing is that we we lasted longer. We stuck it out. And everybody's time frame of getting it is going to be different. But you just have to stick to it until you get there. And you don't want to do the same things all over again. You want to do things that are going to be effective in making you better. So change things around. Be more disciplined in your approach to trading. Be more disciplined to how you break down uh, your mistakes and how you break down the things you did right. So if you do all of those things over time, you're going to realize you're making those significant improvements and you're going to see yourself way better than the position you were in maybe just a year ago. You know, if you do all of this, on average, a lot of traders, they really typically take about three, four, maybe five years where they're seeing really great profits, significant profits. And if you think about that, it's like going to college, right? You're in college four years. You know, the only difference is, I think the major difference here is, you know, at the end of four years, you're getting that degree. And I think it's the fear of the unknown when it comes to trading. You don't know when this is going to happen, but you know that this is something that takes time. And even if it does take four years, even if it does take five, the reward is so worth it. It's so worth it because in the grand scheme of things, if you look at four years of your life invested to change your life financially, it's so worth it. But if you're just looking at things on a micro level and thinking, oh my goodness, I've been doing this for six months, I don't get it, then of course you'll give up. You know, So don't give up, stick to it, and you'll definitely see the rewards of your work. What is your plan going forward with trading and in general? I love the whole idea of being funded. I was a little hesitant at first. It's so worth it. So uh, getting funded millions. And there are other people who have set that precedent as well. So I think that would be awesome getting funded millions and being able to only need a small percentage per month to pretty much go along uh, what's necessary for me to live as, as well as necessary for me to uh, have a pretty happy life. So I think that is definitely the goal right now, trading wise. I have students in my Signal group and I have different people on YouTube who ask me uh, about courses. So I am working on uh, building courses. I am working on more YouTube content. And really, I just want to give back to the trading community. I think it's always important to give back. I'm here because so many other traders gave back and I'm able to take their courses and learn from them. So I just want to do the same in return and give to the trading community for those who are coming up in the future as well. So that would be amazing. Any last words that you would like to share with us? Yes, the money is real. You have to really want it. You may be working and most of us are working, but you still have to understand you can't necessarily do trading part time if you want to see success. Even if you're working full time, you have two full time jobs. You have your regular job and you have trading and you have to put in full time effort in order for you to see the results that you desire. Now, it's very much attainable, but you have to be patient as well. You have to understand that this is a journey. If you want to see yourself becoming a profitable trader, you got to hit those goals, make those improvements, level up each step of the way, and then you'll see yourself at the end of that time as a very profitable trader. So stick with it. It's very much doable. It's very possible, but you have to put in the work. Many have like wrong expectations when they start, and this is the biggest problem. Such kind of freedom cannot come in an easy way, so people should definitely think of that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your experience with us. It will be definitely super exciting to follow your journey. To I will definitely subscribe on your YouTube channel and, and see how everything is going to go. And it will be my pleasure to host you sometime in the future to check how everything is going. Wish you best of luck with uh, trading and um, your business plans and ideas with the mentorship. Yeah, we, we're going to keep in touch. <laughs> to all of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell and show us some love in the comments down below. Trade safe and until next time.